But prioritization from the user angle, technology angle, the business angle, again, the, you know, the typical designs thinking, I guess, fears and what overlaps that would how I would originate my decisions or, you know, I would influence the team to make the decisions. So I guess the tool would actually time you, which I guess is a fair feedback, right? Like you don't want to waffle for too long. Boom. Hey, what is up? Welcome back Design Squad. And in this video, I'm going to review Google's interview warm up AI bot, which basically walks through these a few questions and then gives you some suggestions of what you could improve on in the actual interviews. Now, I'm very skeptical of these type of things because Again, it depends who you apply for. Let's see, Google standards for UX design versus standards of any other startup or agency or companies across the globe are going to be very different. But for the sake of testing this, I'm going to put on the applicant's hat and I'm going to try to see if my actual experience actually resonates with that. Naturally, I cannot mention brand names or things that I would naturally mention in the interviews. That's one disclaimer, because naturally you would want to give examples, nitty gritty detail which are relevant and tell a story about it. So let's say if the bot is going to ask me about mistakes I made, I kind of need to make it up or make it quite general. And I would then expect this bot to tell me that, that, hey, you need to be more specific. So it gives you a few different bits to choose from. It's going to ask me five questions, but I can preview them. And as you can see, they're grouped into background, situational and technical. That's really good because my advice number one would be just literally copy this in somewhere in the document, engage with your friend or a peer and ask them to ask you one of these questions because ultimately you're going to be telling it to another human being. Okay, so this is a tough one immediately because I don't know what the good fit for this role is. I would imagine this is for Google UX design, I guess. But ideally, this bot should show the job spec because the context does matter a hell lot. I'm sure I would be a good fit because over decades, years of expertise in UX design, I led and managed design teams as well as individual contributor in UX, full stack designer from research to design to strategy and leading a lot of different programs, projects, you know, product and service design efforts. All right, let's see if that actually stacks up. I would even expect an interviewer to actually ask for probing questions. Ooh, this is interesting, a good one, a situational one. User journey map is quite essential, especially when you need to capture as is experience. In the past, in every single project, I'm a massive believer of experience mapping, meaning you need to understand what you're researching or interviewing users for and then map it out to understand what we are going through today. And then with a the team ideate exactly and come up with a new user journey maps so that you have the before and after and based on some sort of pain points, let's say opportunities. But that then gives you a tool to not just align the ideas amongst the team, but also look for, you know, the gaps in the journeys, understand exactly if there's massive or bigger impact to the actual user and things of that nature. And I could talk for a very long time, by the way, because this is a big topic. It really also depends if the actual person in the interview is keen to understand it, because you can tell from body language, from how they ask a question, I would expect them to, again, probe for more detail, let's say. And before I answer, I have to preface this, because again, I'm gonna come from, I guess, dozen of years of experience of being very brutal in prioritization, shaping ways of working with a product management and so forth. So my take is going to be very different than let's say a junior would have midweight or senior or, or even elite would have. I feel like this is where the slip could be because people might think, oh, it's too vague, let's say, or too high level or too strategic for what we need. But let's try it out. Uh, it really depends on the stage of a project. So for example, if it's within ideations, you would have a team effort. You would need to to rely on, let's say, a product manager, engineering lead, or somewhere more technical, business stakeholders, and then come together and basically prioritize based on criteria. Again, criteria would, would be the one which the team would have to decide in the initial stages of a project through hypotheses, through the measures, for the experience itself, but also the goals from a business, the you know time frame based type of criteria, like why this has to be happened now, ties, because ideas are very cheap. So you could come up with a lot of 
of different features for a product. It doesn't mean that you need them all immediately. So unlocking the value in slices is super important so that there is enough value for the users to get hooked, but also it allows us to test those hypotheses and see if it sticks with the market, with the actual customer base, capture some analytic data, measures, qualitative feedback, and see if it actually sticks. But prioritization from the user angle, technology angle, the business angle, again, the, you know, the typical designs thinking, I guess, fears and what overlaps that would how I would originate my decisions or, you know, I would influence the team to make the decisions. So I guess the tool would actually time you, which I guess is a fair feedback, right? Like you don't want to waffle for too long. Naturally, before the interview, I think you need to kind of prepare enough so you have a story and be as succinct as possible. And I think I failed at that, but that's totally fine. You see, this is interesting. Another thing which just came into my mind was that this gives you a question and gives you ability to pause. I don't know if they're timing it, if I'm pausing on this answering or not. In reality, if you sit in a room or you're on a Zoom call, you're not gonna be able to kind of pause and say, hold on, let me think about it. Or actually, sorry, you could. You could kind of say, hey, this is a tough question. Let me actually gather my ideas. I did that in the past and it's not going to fail you by any means. It's just going to make you think from that system two perspective instead of being super reactive and give almost like unstructured answer, which might not be true if you think just for additional 10 seconds more. So learning to me is very essential in UX design. I feel like every UX designer signs up for a lifetime of learning because you always have to check emerging tech and things of that nature. The latest skill which I develop is problem driven. This is what I like to do. I almost like don't like to learn based on just for the sake of learning because a lot of that is forgotten. So I, if I have a problem somewhere or if I need to experience something, I'm just, you know, getting deeply immersed into things. So I read up on it. I listen to podcasts, audiobooks, things of that nature. One of the examples could be which I wonder if I can talk about my management route or my individual contributor route. Um, ultimately, I love working with other people. I feel like collaboration is this hard to learn thing for designers because we get ingrained into the detail. For me, UX is orchestration of the detail. Um, we guide the process. We inform the ways of working. We basically bring the user centric methods to arrive at better conclusions or better solutions or steps to take. But actual, you know, solution comes not from our ideas, but from the actual research insights and themes. To me, UX is a team sport and that's what I'm doing. I might be a team coach for user-centric workshops, but then I allow people to step in and do their thing. From people management perspective, autonomy and positioning are key to me, autonomy to allow people to do their job best. And positioning is meaning to give them the right challenge or you know challenge them enough with the right things. And then it just gives us, I guess, a list of those things. Let's see what the most used words are. Okay, so it highlights the keywords, which is good. You kind of know how much you repeat. You wouldn't want it to be like, oh, you know, uh, and things of that nature, you know, appearing. So I guess that's a good one, which I'm guilty of. I tend to overuse the you knows and likes and all those different bits, which are just polluting the actual language. And then it gives you these suggestions of what you should be highlighting. Of course, we are not giving you examples of actual things, but we give you the types of things. Let's see what next talking points. So my accent might have played a bit of a role in here as well, because it doesn't make sense, but it captured a lot more than from the previous one. So the skills, lessons learned, examples, I guess it helps you a bit to structure your answer. So you highlight those things. And so based on this, I would be a bit concerned that I'm not maybe peppering enough technical knowledge, which I actually got in as a positive feedback from my interviews that I'm making things very easy to understand or almost putting this complex UX processes management talk in very simple language, which I guess 
I like to do, even creating YouTube videos. I hope it comes out that way because I don't think it, we should overcomplicate things for the sake of it. It should be accessible to all. So, but I wonder if this picks up it as a concern, but also the goal. So I guess you need to think about what you need to do in the future, which I do agree when I interview candidates, if they have aspirations and expectations that are not afraid to talk about it and not afraid to say, hey, I did this in the past, and maybe this is by way a piece of advice to you, but I did this in the past and this is the example, but in the future I would have done something differently. Or in the next role, I want to do this and that and this, and that's how I would reshape it or do something different. And that immediately also is lesson learned, but also goals and interests and passion and everything in between, which is hard to quantify. I feel like it's a good almost starter tool. I hope we are going to improve on this because to me personally, as a hiring manager at least, and as a candidate, the sentiment matters too. The sentiment can build a lot of trust. It's like positivity or negativity of your language or how you come out as, you know, sometimes you might not have a good enough night's sleep and you might talk about something and it might appear like you're bored, but in reality you are not. And, you know, all those different bits which are, again, sort of in your control, but also out of your control. To me, the AI should be used to bridge that gap, what's out of your control, what's in your control, and then coming up with better solutions like a tool like this. Make sure to also check my other videos on interviews. I have a lot of tips, I'm gonna leave them here floating around. If you like this video, smash that like button, leave a comment maybe, subscribe, and on that note, I'll see you next time.